So I'm here in Belfair, Washington, and I'm staying at this little retreat center, really, right? It's called Sela Inn. Really sweet. Uh, put in the comments below if you know of a retreat center that you that you enjoy. I would love to 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 look into them. But I'm here. My dear friend here, put this on here. Well, the the Lord set me free just through the understanding that um, I was no longer judged as a sinner in His eyes, and so that I, I He actually saw me as a saint and adopted me as His son. And um, the Lord took it deeper, though, where it's not just me being justified, but that Christ actually is righteousness for us. And so I was seeking the Lord, wondering what what does that look like? And He began to show me um, His countenance is the best way to describe it. Um, he took me to the word meekness. And in the Webster's Dictionary, it says that meekness or to be meek is the quality to be patient under injuries and so for him to acquit me of all wrongs and to take death for me and to you know no longer remember our sins or lawless deeds I began to see a vision of the Lord where it was as though he was being stoned and it was very blurry but the more he took upon himself the clearer his face became and as sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And so just this vision of the Lord beholding me with joy where He absorbs all my sin and becomes my righteousness. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake Nice. So we got the School of His Presence today so here. It went amazing. We all loved on Jesus, just enjoying His presence. And now I'm at this, uh, I'm at this retreat center. Or I don't even know if it's a retreat center. But it's a really cool spot. Look at this. All my love, you have been so, so good. Oh, this is nice. With so every good. breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. This is it. it comes from the, all the way out here at the ocean. It comes all the way down all the way in here, we're at the tip of it. All the way up in there, <laughs> Belfair. I'm gonna say anything that really stuck out to my, my heart today. It was that in Laodicea, the church feels like they're in need of nothing. And it's because they feel that they're in need of nothing. Jesus is outside of the house. He's not in fellowship with them, but he wants to come in. So he doesn't abandon them because they feel like they have need of nothing. But he's not able to be with them in communion if they feel like they have need of nothing. It is our great need for Christ that is a foundational point of fellowship with him. It's very important for us to come to him. I need you, Lord. And from this place, we enter into that sweet communion with him. Eric said he'll end his purposes through you if he doesn't have your heart. That's, yeah. he wants to be loved regardless of what we can do for him. That is so true. Did you have anything happen to you today? You there? Yeah, during the first session, the first three hours, the, the Lord's presence was so sweet. Like it was just a weighty, weighty sweetness. And I started having, I've never, I've never really, I've never been, done poetry before, but I was having so many poetic sayings just running through my mind, like line after line after line after line. I think I got an impartation of poetry from Eric. 
And I started, I tried to write some of them down and then I would like reread them and they did not make any sense. So I think that a lot of them are their own poems in and of themselves, but they were so sweet. That's the best way to describe it. They were just like, each line was just so sweet of just the simplicity of loving the Lord. Hey guys, I'm still here in um, Belfair, Washington. The School of His Presence was amazing yesterday. I'm gonna be speaking at the morning service today, but check this out. In uh, Romans 12, everybody knows this verse where it says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you will be able to prove what the will of God is, uh, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. But check this out. The word that starts this whole section off is therefore, which means you have to figure out what it's there for. And you find out that by looking at what's said right before it. Check this out. It says, Oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, <laughs> and uh, both of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, and unfathomable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who became his counselor, or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? Then it says, for from him, through him, and to him are all things. To him be all the glory. So it just hit me today that he owes us nothing. He is everything. All things are from him, to him, and through him. And with this understanding that we compared to him are nothing and that he is everything, that's the ground upon which we lay our lives. Therefore, recognizing the sovereignty and glory of God, we lay our lives down. Because He is so great, this is the only thing that makes sense, to lay down our lives at His feet. And the moment you do that, you're different than the world, because the world will not do that. And that in and of itself renews the way you see life. It's a renewing of the mind. And then you're able to manifest God's will, His good, acceptable, and perfect will in the world. So I just encourage you uh, to look up, look at the glory of God, stare at the glory of Christ, and from there you will lay your life down to someone who's so beautiful, someone who's so sovereign, and someone who's so glorious. And in that vision of Christ, laying your life down, that is the only thing that makes sense and it quickens you with a renewed mind so that you're able to manifest God's will in your life. So God bless you guys. All right, so me and Bradford are here inside the, the inn. We're gonna go outside here. He's gotta tell you this uh, vision. It was a vision, right? It was a dream. A dream that he had concerning the secret place of the Most High. Uh, you know the scripture talks about he who dwells in a secret place. We were just saying that how can you dwell, live in a secret place, and live life if it's an actual place? It's got to be something so much more than, you know, a closet or a, a location. It has to be a state of being. So check this out. Um, I'm going to hand him the mic and he's going to tell you this dream that he had that really explains what the secret place does for us and is. So I, I had this dream one night. It was about a year ago. And in the dream, I, it was just like I could see myself standing there, like me, and then I saw this hideous, like pale, gray looking man that I knew was the devil. And um, it was like he, was, he had the most sinister look on his face and he went to like snatch me. And when he went to grab me, I disappeared. And like he like, his arms went through where I was and he was like, Where'd he go? And I, I, in the dream, I knew that I went into the secret place. And so I woke up from the dream and I was like, that's so cool because he hides us in the secret place of his presence. And it just dawned on me, it's the secret place because the devil can't find it. Like it, it's, a, it's a secret place that only God's friends know about and only his friends can find. Look at these trees.
So the question is, if I'm going to give advice to a believer, what's the one thing? Uh, well, I think, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, a trick question because it, it's pretty much Eric's message. It is to behold Christ. Um, he, Jesus talks about you know, this one thing that Mary's discovered. That's it, and, and it won't be taken. And so for me, as a, a pastor, the one thing I, I, I'm like, I said it, I said it to a, a bunch of believers today. I said, listen, I can't go to your secret place with you, but there's things that I can never give you that will only be given to you in that place. And it's given by beholding. And so the scripture says that, that we have the mind of Christ. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 talks about the secrets, the mysteries that have been held back, but no eye has seen, no tongue, but to us has been given. So we can only know it by the Spirit of God, but we've been given this Spirit. So we can see, search these things. Well, He is wisdom. He is Lady Wisdom. Anything you'll ever want is found in Him and is found in that place of beholding. So it's to behold. Literally every mystery can be revealed in Him, but you have to come to Him um, personally and behold Him. So that's, that's, that's my, my, my one advice is, is fall deeply, madly in love with Jesus and, uh, and s stay humble. And uh, humble position always keeps you in a place where you know how much you need Him. And I had one pastor friend say to me, he says, the closer I get to him, the more I realize that I need him. And the farther I realize I'm from attaining um, the, same, the sameness as him. So, so just go after him, behold him. So I'm all done here in Belfair, Washington. What an incredible time of ministry, preaching on the person of Jesus experienced and enjoyed the team here was amazing. The pastors, incredible. They love each other. They <laughs> heal the sick, cast out devils in the name of Jesus. And the, the most incredible thing about them is that they are family, meaning they love to be together. It's not a, quote, intentional community trying to make themselves uh, accomplish some type of divine purpose. They, by the infilling of the Spirit and the enjoyment of Jesus personally love to be together. And this touches my heart, watching them serve one another and enjoy each other. So wherever you find yourself, I pray that God would baptize you all in the Spirit so that there would be a unity connected one with another. A.W. Tozer said, if a hundred pianos are tuned to one uh, tuning instrument, then they all, being individuals focused on one, are never more one than when you're focused on one. So thank you for watching. I wasn't able to film a whole lot, but I did get a couple of good snippets from these pastors. God bless you guys. Thank you for watching.